Welcome to The Bridge. I'm Pastor Randy, and this is my wife, Nancy, and it's Resurrection Sunday. Yeah, yeah. praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. We're going to be talking about the problems and the challenges of, of the last week, but today's the day of victory. So welcome to our time together. Thank you for uh, joining us. We just, we are blown away at the things God is doing in and around the world. This is my wife, and she's going to welcome you. Welcome. <laughs> there you go. Happy Resurrection Day. I'm a little overboard here because of the <laughs> no, day. No, it's great. It's the day to be excited. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have every reason to be excited. I'm because, out of control. <laughs> because it was Friday, yeah. but Sunday's a coming, mm -hmm. and it's Sunday. And what does that mean? Good Friday was significant because <laughs> it took Jesus yeah. to the cross. Yeah. Sad day, yeah. yeah. They should call it Black Friday. <laughs> But it's good because of yeah. the result that comes after. Right. And um, that kind of goes right along with your sermon is the greater the challenge, the greater the victory. Hallelujah. And Jesus <laughs> went through that challenge. And he said, if you take Amen. this cup from me, God, I don't want it. Yeah. But, but good point, Sunday Lisa. came and he sacrificed all right. and even went to the grave. But he arose from the dead. Oh, yeah. Tell me what other God has done that. Right. Who else loves you enough to do that? Mm -hmm. Nobody can even do that except mm -hmm. Jesus right. through the power of God and the resurrection power. And so praise God for that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, I think that was kind Amen. of the testimony already. Sure. So, but take us to the throne of prayer. Sure. But, 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 but before you do that, I want to say right down below there, I want you to see the ways in which you can connect with us, our website and different platforms on which we are available for you to view us on. And we just want to thank God because you are supporting a, a viable ministry. I want you to know that it is a viable ministry. We are, it's not coming to us personally. It's going out and going forth mm -hmm. into the foreign countries and helping people here in America as well as abroad. And right. so we praise God for the testimonies that God is, is showing us as a result of just being used, just mm -hmm. being available to God. So thank you for your prayers and your support on that. And um, Randy continues to sure. go where where he's led. Amen. So lead us Amen. to the throne now. Sure. Amen. Pray with me, would you? Gracious Jesus. Father, each of us have challenges. Thank you, Jesus. Each of us have had a thank Friday you. experience yes. where we had to let something die oh, in order Jesus. for you to bring Jesus. new life. We were in sin, and then we were born again. Yes. We were sinners, and then we were water baptized after salvation. Amen. We thank you for the watery grave that represents thank the new life. And thank we come you. up out of that water. We come up out of our sin, covered by the blood of Jesus. Thank you for what communion means. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for the doorposts, even today, that are covered in a spiritual way over our Amen. homes and over our marriages, Hallelujah. over our churches. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that the church is alive Thank and you. well and that we haven't Thank let you, COVID or crazy thinking uh, to keep us apart, Amen. but that we've come together Thank today to celebrate the resurrection. We know the resurrection changed everything. everything. It's the difference Hallelujah. between us and every religion in the world is that Hallelujah. you changed our hearts. You, you came back to life. Thank you you proved to Doubting Thomas that you, you were alive. Amen. Peter, Amen. who ran and you, cussed Jesus. and hid, and, and he did wrong on the time of your trial in the time Hallelujah. of the cross they all ran except john but we thank you lord oh, dear Jesus. thank you that you're alive that they all came back and that they served you Hallelujah. help many to come Hallelujah. back yes God. can i pray that for you friend thank you Jesus. come back, come back to Jesus. deeper Hallelujah. deeper than stronger than ever be Amen. like that tree planted Amen. by the water thank you Jesus. that cannot be moved Hallelujah. heal my thank friends you. lord those that have been struggling Heal their minds, their Thank thought you, process. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Take away jealousy. Take yes. away fear. Add faith. Add kindness. Uh, minister now, we pray. Thank minister you, to my friends, Lord Thank Jesus. You, Jesus. Take pain. Pain, we speak to you. Jesus took it on Hallelujah. Calvary. Hallelujah. And now you have that ability, Lord, to lift pain from people. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That they might get up and, and go to a sunrise or go to a service today 
on Resurrection Sunday and celebrate you. Thank you Jesus. Help us to make the effort, Lord. And when we pray around our Easter table, let us to give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise, Lord. Yes. For that, we praise you. Thank you for the, the opportunities that you've given us Thank through you, the bridge Jesus. to minister. Yes. And uh, Lord, may we die and may you increase. May we be less and you be more. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I pray that anointing that's already on the word as Nancy uh, reads it, Lord, Thank it's the most Jesus. important part Thank of this you, time together is us reading the Bible. Hallelujah. Help my friends who are listening to not go on to another place, but to stay and honor you, not honor us. They, they don't even have to like us, Lord. But we want them to hear the word and we want them to make heaven. That's our pillar of our ministry Amen. is to get everybody Amen. who Thank listens you. to know you and one day be able to celebrate with them in heaven. And for that, we give you glory and honor and praise. In the resurrected name of Jesus, we pray. Can you say a double hallelujah? Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Well, I did three. <laughs> but well, God's it's okay good. to be carried away. God's good. He deserves it. Yeah. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, I am going to read um, from Luke chapter 22, and I'm going to read verse, starting at verse 24 and going through 32. And again, the sermon title is, The Greater the Challenge, right. the Greater the Victory. Amen. And I think we've all been through some dark times, but there's another saying that says, It's darkest before dawn. Right. Kind of goes with that. So right. kind of segue into the sermon. So here's sure. the scripture. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was considered to be the greatest. <laughs> Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, the one who rules like the one who serves. Right. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as the one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in trials, mm -hmm. and I confer you on a kingdom, <clears throat> just as my father conferred one on me so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom mm -hmm. and sit on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked you to sift all of you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Thank the Lord. Simon, that your faith may not fail. That's right. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers amen amen wow that's an interesting easter passage <laughs> take us to the resurrection amen. amen amen praise god thank you for the most important part of our time together is nancy reading the bible i'm going to try to uh, lace some things together uh, for you and and try to take Very it deep. to i just uh, really want the holy spirit to guide us and guide you this is a day to rejoice, but in order to rejoice, we need to realize that, you know, Satan has tried to sift the church through COVID. Many churches were closed, and now I want to encourage you to be involved in your church. From this, those of you that go to Easter service, or as you watch this, determine in your mind this day of Easter Sunday, me and my house will serve the Lord. And you have to figure out how that works for you, given your uh, life and circumstance. But the prescription is not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as some are in the habit of doing. And I just want you to see here that there was an argument going on here uh, with the disciples about who's the greatest. And we see that in our world today. People are always, what's in it for me? Even when they go to church, which is not a healthy way to look at our lives, we need to realize it isn't about us benefiting how cool the music was or 
how big the uh, congregation numbers were, uh, you know, how uh, wonderful whatever it is. Uh, but what it's really about is that Jesus was wanting to teach them how to be servants. And one of the most beautiful things of the night before Jesus' trial was he had a time where they got together and they shared the Passover. And we know that the Passover's origin was when the death angel was going over Egypt and over that whole area. And there was both Israelis and, and there was uh, Egyptians there. And the Lord said, have a, an animal sacrifice, take a little bit of the blood. And I know for some of you that seems a little weird, but it's not because life is in the blood. It's very clear scientifically, the life, that's the oxygen gets into the blood, it nurtures the muscles, and it's the ability of the blood to flow to the brain. That's what causes a stroke, is it's a brain bleed. And then part of your arm doesn't work anymore, or maybe a whole side of your body, or it could even take your life. So when the death angel came to take the lives, those that had put the blood over the doorpost, the death angel couldn't enter in. That's why we use the word covered by the blood of Jesus. But they're having this argument and Jesus corrects them with a couple of great illustrations. And stay with me if you would, would because this is important. Jesus says here that the greatest should be like the youngest. Well, in your family, my family, I'm the family of four. I'm the fourth child. So my brothers and my sister who were older than me, they got to do a lot of things before I got to do them. They got bigger bicycles. They got to go with places that I couldn't go. We would uh, remember going to Pacific Ocean Park, which doesn't exist anymore. But I remember going there as a, a young boy wanting to ride on a roller coaster. And everybody in my family got to ride except for me because I was too short. So Jesus is saying here, really, he himself is like the younger one. He divested himself of glory because we were in sin and in a challenge and somebody had to come and correct the wrong. Let's do that today in this message in our own lives. Let's not just talk about wow and wow, but let's talk about correcting. I want the Holy Spirit to correct me you know, the Bible says in the last uh, part of Revelation, and we talked about it last week, falsehood and those who practice falsehood, they don't get to go through the gates into heaven. Read it for yourself. The last part of the book of Revelation, chapter 22. So notice, who's the greater one? He asks as the second illustration. Is it the one at the table or the one who serves? Well, it's the one at the table. Now, what, is, what does Jesus do? Jesus serves. And at that time of gathering with his disciples, he took off his beautiful outward garment. And it must have been nice because they, they gambled for it to get it when he was on the cross. So it must have been beautiful. But then he wraps a towel around himself and gets a basin of water. And he goes around and he washes all the disciples' feet. Peter doesn't want it. But when Jesus says, unless I can serve you like this, Peter... We're not on the same team. And you know, there's a lot of people that are believing, well, whatever thing you believe or want to believe, just so you believe it, you'll go to heaven. Friend, that's simply not true. There's a lot of false religions and false ideologies. We can't follow those. We want to follow the one that broke the power of death, sin, and the grave. And there's only one who did that. And he's more than a teacher. He is the only begotten son John 3, 16. So as this is happening, Jesus then models humility. Remember, this is resurrection day, but Jesus didn't let them take his life. He could have stopped it at any moment. Jesus said, no, I am going to give my life. Track with me because this is about you right now. Jesus was fully God, fully man simultaneously. To believe anything other than that's going to lead you down a path of confusion. 
Jesus was fully man through Mary and the humanity. And then the conception of Jesus was through the Holy Spirit, and that's the God part. So he's fully God, fully man. And Jesus then offers himself to God by saying someone has to pay to correct the wrong that has been done in the world. And Jesus volunteers to do that. So even before the foundations of the world or even the possibility that Adam and Eve and the rest of us who would sin, ultimately, the plan for us being rescued was for Jesus to be that one. So I hope that you see that Jesus is the one that came, offered himself as a blood sacrifice. And, you know, while Jesus is on the cross, they're actually offering a lamb sacrifice in the temple. They were trying to do both because many were still under the Jewish law that God had given historically and Moses had written it down. But notice what happens when Jesus says it's finished, then there's an earthquake and the separation curtain between the holy place and the holy of holies is ripped in two and there's access now by all of us to go before God. That's why you don't need to go through me to get to God. You can go, as Paul says, yourself. I come boldly before the throne of grace. And Paul was a sinner. Paul did bad things before his road to Damascus conversion. And I'm praying for some of you that are watching right now that God would let you have that experience of hearing the voice of the Savior. Read the word and let him talk to you. Get into the Bible and watch it come alive. Watch him do. But notice that Satan has been sent to sift. Satan is coming against the church. Satan is coming against you, coming against your marriage, coming against your children, coming against our bodies through sickness and disease. He's coming against us. So he would like to sift us separate us and that's why this whole i can't be with other people is so destructive because we need one another remember when jesus heads to the garden and it says that he took peter james and john a little further and then it says then jesus went about a stone's throw i don't know how far you can throw a stone but whatever that would be for you that's about how far jesus went by himself and he fell on the ground and he began to pray because he knew what was coming. He had read Psalms 22. He had read Isaiah 53. He knew what was coming. He knew about the nails and he knew about the, the difficulty and the crown of thorns and the whip and the spear. Those things were prophesied hundreds of years before they actually happen. And right now he's trying to stop you. Some of you are dealing with depression. And part of that has been the decay of us not being together over the last couple of years. Come back to the church, friend. Come back, listen to two or three sermons on Sundays. Come back, turn off some of the world's entertainment and nurture your soul on Sunday. I'm excited to hear that even Walgreens and and other businesses, uh, of course, Chick-fil-A, they are closed on Sundays. J.C. Penney's used to be closed on Sundays. And, and I think that more businesses are healthier when they let their managers and their employees have a day off to, to rest and to rejuvenate and to recreate and get ready. But Jesus rescued us. How did he do that? He prayed for us. And you can go to John 17 and see where Jesus prayed for himself then the middle part of that chapter, he then prays for his ministry team. And then he prayed for you. Doesn't that feel good to know that Jesus prayed for you? He will not let Satan stop you if you are willing to stand in faith and receive what Jesus has for us. Then we won't fail. See, Satan wants you to fail. Satan wants to come against you. He wants to hurt you. And I just hope that you see that the greater the challenge, the greater the victory. 
Now go with me again. We're going to move toward the resurrection. But Jesus on Friday, he was, he was in pain. And Jesus on Friday was in it. He wanted to be the ultimate sacrifice. He wanted to give his life. So he looks down through time and he sees Kathy. He sees Mike, sees Jose, sees Sally, sees Nancy, sees Randy, sees you, whatever your name is. And he says, I'm going to take this pain for you. He could have rescued himself. I go to the dentist sometimes, and uh, before I lean back and let them start drilling and working on me, I always laugh and say to them, if you hurt me, I'm not paying the bill. <laughs> and they chuckle and laugh, the, usually the uh, assistant and the doctor, and I say, I'm not, I'm not teasing. <laughs> I, I don't want you to hurt me because I don't like pain. Our bodies are filled with nerves that don't like pain. But Jesus took pain for you. And sometimes in this life, remember, this is not heaven. This is the test. If we pass the test by staying faithful, then we will go to heaven. And friend, can I encourage you? Don't go to heaven immature. Because you are going to be granted responsibility in eternity based upon your maturity and the level of walk that you have with God. Some are going to make heaven by the skin of their teeth. But if you mature, let the Holy Spirit mature you. Because what if a nuclear bomb did go off in America? What if there was a massive earthquake in California that killed not just hundreds, but what if it killed millions? Uh, and there are forces in the world today that are preparing to attack parts of the world. And the Bible says that one third of the world will be annihilated. And are we ready? I mean, look at what's happened in Ukraine. What, look what's happened and happening again in Afghanistan. And God bless the Pakistani people because they are believers and they're reaching out to the Afghan people. God bless Poland because they're reaching out to the Ukrainian people and perhaps many, many others. But those are some that I'm directly aware of, directly aware of. This is through our missionaries. This isn't something I've dreamed up or trying to create. No, these are truthful things. The Assemblies of God have Convoy of Hope, and they're delivering food right now to the people that have fled Ukraine. See, God has a way to provide for you, just as he fed the 5,000 and another occasion he fed 4,000 with just a little bit of food, all were fed. And, and I think you ought to prepare for a, a dark day, just like we ought to have you know, some money on hand and at least three months income in your savings account. Because if we don't prepare and then when something bad happens, you're gonna be at the mercy of whoever wants to manipulate you. And friends, I, I want to say prophetically, the food lines and the food support is going to, you're going to be affected by that. Because over 20% of the wheat in Europe is produced by Ukraine and they have not been able to plant because of the war. Well, you know, if they don't supply that protein that needs to go to the people in, in Africa, in the Middle East, in other places where they can't grow. Ukraine is a little bit like California. It's the breadbasket of many parts of the world. So there's going to be a great strain on the food and the food supply, not just because of the higher cost of fuel, but there's going to be less food available. We're going to see food shortages, some this year, but I would say next year because there's some in the silos now. But what happens when the silos are empty? What happens when the grocery stores are not being supplied? So if you prepare, just as we are preparing for the coming of the Lord, if, and you don't, and the Bible says you won't know that the Lord was gonna come tomorrow, how would you live your life today? What would your prayer be like today 
at your Easter gathering, uh, when you have your Easter meal with your family, what would that prayer look like if you knew for sure this was our last Easter? I'm not saying it is, but we need to be prepared and live our lives and be ready for that. So again, they crucify Jesus. Uh, Josephus comes, they put his body in the grave. They put a rock up there. They seal the tomb. They even bring soldiers that come and watch the tomb so they couldn't steal the body. And if they stole the body, tell people that he was alive. But notice that when it looked the darkest, like Nancy said, when it looked like God had let Jesus die and it was over, sometime on the first day of the week, which was Sunday, uh, angels came, rolled that stone away, rescued Jesus, and he arose, and he laid his napkin there, folded it because he was coming back, but he removed the death clothes, he removed all of that, and he walked out of that sepulcher, and all, and all of the soldiers were slain back because of his resurrection, because he was alive. And the first person that he went to see was Mary. And he was making, he was making statements, women, you are important. And he revealed himself to Mary. He then began to tell them, now go tell the disciples. The disciples came. And when they got to the tomb, they saw angels there. Why do you look for the living amongst the dead? He is not here, the angel said, for he is risen. And then he began to share and appear before the disciples. And when he was with the disciples, Thomas wasn't there. And uh, wow, wow, I just want you to see that Jesus came back to life. Even old doubting Thomas, even Philip knew that Jesus was alive. Would you accept that today? Search it out. If you need to search it out, the more you search, the more you'll find. Jesus is not dead. He has risen. Pray with me. Let me bless you today. Lord, as we wrap up our few minutes together here on the bridge, I pray that those who are watching, that they would experience the power of the resurrection. Once we were dead in sin, once we owed God a great debt because we've lied, we've stolen, we've done things we shouldn't do, we've broken the Ten Commandments, we've dishonored God, we've dishonored others in places in our lives, we've dishonored our families. Forgive us, Lord. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just say that right now. Just say, Lord, I believe in the resurrection. Forgive me of my sin. And now I want to rejoice in my new life in you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Nancy and I send you blessings and greetings. Uh, invest with us if you would. Invest with us through prayer. Invest with us by watching our ministry moments. Uh, these anointed times when the word of God it's not us. It's the word of God that's alive. Invest with us if you can a little bit with your missions dollars. Support your local church. Uh, but I want you to stand with us. Let's together get this done. And before the Lord comes back one more time, Lord, let us have the opportunity to say that Jesus is alive. Uh, from us to you, God bless you. And we'll see you next time on the bridge. Thank you for joining us today on the bridge. Please check out our website at www.thebridgeministry.online. Also like us on your favorite social media platform. And if you're on YouTube, be sure and like and subscribe. Thank you and have a great week.